Welcome to the second lecture in our series on abortion. Uh, in this series, we'll cover, we have covered the standard abortion debate, and then we'll cover two pro-choice arguments and two pro-life arguments. Okay, so we've covered the standard abortion debate. Now we're looking at other arguments. One is Marianne Warren's pro-choice argument. Uh, another is Judith Jarvis Thompson's pro-choice argument. Another is Patrick Lee's pro-life argument. And then another is Don Marquis' pro-life argument. So let's look at Marianne Warren's pro-choice argument. And this is from her article called On the Moral and Legal Status of Abortion. In the article, her aim is to show that a fetus is not a person and hence not the sort of entity to which it is proper to ascribe full moral rights. All right, so she thinks a fetus isn't a person and therefore abortion is not morally uh, wrong. And so the fundamental question per Noonan uh, is how do you define or how do you determine the humanity of a being? This Marianne Warren thinks is fundamental to the abortion debate and uh, uh, whether or not the, the fetus is a human and how do you define what it is to be a human being. And um, Noonan, he's a pro-lifer and he agrees with her on this, that the, this is the fundamental question. And I think that, I think that's right, like, because you, you can't kill something unless you know what it is, right? And so then the abortion debate would center around like figuring out what is the fetus. Before she gets to her argument, she gives an initial caveat. She says, because pro-abortionists have never adequately come to grips with the conceptual issues surrounding abortion, most, if not all of the arguments which they advance in opposition to laws restricting access to abortion, fail to refute or even weaken the traditional anti-abortion argument, namely that the fetus is a human being and therefore abortion is murder. What she's saying is that like the, the pro-choicers, pro-abortionists are like missing out here. They're missing something because they don't understand. They're not coming to grips with the pro-life case. And so they're, when they reply to pro-lifers or um, pro-life laws restricting abortion, they're, they're not even really getting at the issue. So for example, here's a bad pro-abortion pro argument, according to Warren. Number one, uh, it, restricting access to abortion has terrible social consequences. So the idea is like, hey, if you um, made abortion illegal, then there'd be back alley abortions. Um, there'd be kids born, more kids born into poverty. Um, the, <clears throat> uh, you know, social services would have to take care of more kids, that sort of thing. Um, and the reply is like, you don't, you don't understand. Right. If the fetus is a human being and abortion is murder, well, then just because there are going to be more kids born into poverty, it doesn't mean you can kill them. Right. So the, this is about pro, pro abortion argument because it misses out on what the pro lifer is actually saying. Um, if abortion really is murder, then you should be restricting it in spite of whatever social consequences there are, um, says Marianne Warren. And remember, she's pro-choice. And here's another bad pro-abortion argument. My property might say so. Yeah, I've heard lots of people say this. My uterus, my choice. Um, well, the reply is property rights don't give you a right to murder. So if abortion really is murder, uh, then uh, just because the kid is on your property, namely your body, it doesn't mean you can kill him, right? So Marianne Warren gives an example of like some you inviting someone onto your property and then saying, hey, you're on my property, I could do what I want, and then, then you kill them. Well, okay, so just because someone comes over to your house, it doesn't mean you can kill them, right? Now, I understand there's the notion of like trespassing, um, but people who trespass, do they have an ill intent or not, right? Um, let's talk about, forget the legal, let's talk about the moral. If someone comes onto your property without ill intent uh, and you see that they don't have ill intent, you don't you can't just kill them. You say, excuse me, would you kindly get off my property? Right. If someone comes onto your property with ill intent, well, morally, maybe you have a right to defend your property and you have a right to harm them. So, you know, like this on the uh, the right to harm someone based on like them using or being on your property only goes so far and it seems it only goes so far as like being able to 
prevent someone from damaging your property who has ill intent, maybe. And so um, what Marianne Warren would say is like, if someone is innocent, you don't have a right to kill them just because they're on your property, morally speaking. And so she says like this idea of my, my body, my choice uh, doesn't really work. Okay, so the fundamental question, as we saw, is like, how do you define the humanity of a being? So figure out what the fetus is and then figure out how we should treat the fetus in light of that. And she distinguishes between two senses of being human. Number one is a genetic sense, where a human being is a member of the species Homo sapien. So Noonan says, it's yeah, it's, hum it's a human being. Obviously, it's got a full genetic code, potential for rational thought, etc., and I mean, embryologists agree with this. There's no doubt about it. Like we're human beings from conception in this sense. And Warren wants to push back against it. She admits he, fetus is a human being, but she says, why should being a genetic human being, like why, why should uh, we think that that gives you any sort of rights? Okay, so she thinks that you gain rights when you're a human being in the moral sense. You're a human being in this sense, or you're a person. If you go back to the standard abortion debate, you'll see the distinction between being a human being and a person. That being a human being and being a person is the same as being human in a genetic sense, being human in a moral sense, right? Okay, so being a person, when you're a person, you're a full-fledged member of the moral community, and all and only entities that qualify as persons have full moral rights, for example, the right not to be eaten. So here Warren distinguishes between being genetically human and being morally human. And while you have the right not to be killed when you're a moral human, you don't have that right when you're a mere genetic human and therefore abortion is not the killing of a person or a human being in the moral sense. Okay, so what characteristics entitle an entity to be considered a moral human being or a person? She says consciousness, the capacity to feel pain. Two, reasoning. This is a developed capacity to solve new and relatively complex problems. Three, self-motivated activity like free will. Four, the capacity to communicate uh, messages of indefinite variety of types. So this is like the ability to communicate in complex ways. Uh, five, the presence of self-concepts or self-awareness either individual or racial, that is uh, human human race versus, uh, you know, dolphin or whatever, or both. So what she said, she would say that, like, something that satisfies all of these is definitely a person. Something that satisfies none of these is definitely not a person. And then there's kind of this middle ground where it's un unclear. But suppose that you just have one, consciousness and the capacity to feel pain. You wouldn't qualify as a person, she says. Like squirrels are conscious. They can feel pain, but they're not persons. And so she, she would say they are not part of the moral community. Um, but if you have like a bunch of these, say three, four, five, then you're definitely a person. So uh, genetic humanity is neither necessary nor sufficient for establishing that an entity is a person. So just because you're genetically human, Marianne Warren would say, doesn't mean that you're a person or a moral human being. Some human beings, she says, are not people. A man or a woman whose consciousness is permanently obliterated but is biologically alive, so someone in a persistent vegetative state. So these are genetically human beings who are not people. Or defective human beings with no noticeable mental capacity. Uh, having one of a ver of, of various sort of uh, genetic anomalies that would uh, prevent you from exercising your mental capacity or having it at all. She would say these aren't people, though they're genetically human beings. And then, so, so what that means is that um, being a genetic human being is not sufficient for being a person. And then some non-humans are people, at least hypothetically. Um, so self-aware robots if there could be such a thing or intelligent aliens if there is such a thing so like being a human being genetic genetic human being is not necessary for being a person so genetic humanity is neither necessary nor sufficient for being a person so so then now you have to just look at the individual entity itself and discover is it a person or isn't it so let's apply it to fetuses are fetuses people 
Well, consider the various characteristics for personhood. Number one, consciousness and the capacity for pain. Two, rationality. Three, self-motivated activity. Four, the capacity to engage in complex communication. And five, possessing self-concepts and self-awareness. No, the fetus is not a person on this view. Um, up to a certain point in pregnancy, it possesses none of these. And after a certain point in the pregnancy, it possesses number one, you know, consciousness and the capacity to feel pain. But for Warren, this isn't enough. The fetus has no more rights, she thinks, than the life, right to life than that of a new newborn guppy. So she would equate the fetus uh, with a newborn guppy in terms of having certain rights. So um, the fetus is not a person on her view. Thus, she says, whether or not it would be indecent, whatever that means, for a woman in her seven month to obtain an abortion just to avoid having a, to postpone a trip to Europe, it would not in itself be immoral and therefore it ought to be permitted. Now there's something wrong with this statement. I mean, there's a lot wrong with it, but there's something wrong with it. Like the seven month fetus has more psychological capacities than the newborn guppy. Um, and so it would have more rights than the newborn guppy. So, I mean, even on our own standards, that doesn't really work, but you could talk about a fetus at four weeks or something like that. There's a potential problem for Warren's view and she recognizes it in fantasize. Uh, so if in order to be a person, have a right to life and such, you have to have all these psychological properties. Well, what about the newborn? They lack those properties. And so what she says is, it may appear to justify not only abortion, but infanticide as well. A newborn infant is not a great deal more person-like than a nine-month fetus. And thus it might seem that if late-term abortion is sometimes justified, then infanticide must also be sometimes justified as well. Yet most people consider that infanticide is a form of murder and that's never justified. So you're going to have to like say why it's okay to kill the seven month fetus in utero and not the infant. And she has no principled way to make a distinction between the two because there's not much of a difference in terms of being person like between the seven month fetus and the infant. And so this makes her uncomfortable because she doesn't want to say that infanticide is okay. And yet she has no principled way to rule it out. So what she says is, if my argument is correct, neither abortion or infanticide constitutes the killing of a person. How does she respond? She says, even though infanticide is not murder, i.e. the just unjustified killing of a person, number one, they're close to being persons, so killing them requires a strong justification, as does the killing of a dolphin. And this doesn't make sense to me because you wouldn't kill... A dolphin I mean however however like this scenario would work I'm not sure but you wouldn't kill a dolphin like because the dolphin is getting in your way of a trip to Europe but she says you could kill the fetus because it's getting in the way of a seven-month-old fetus because it's getting in the way of your trip to Europe so it doesn't seem like she's consistent there um, that's not a very strong justification oh I'd like to go to Europe this thing's getting in my way so I'll kill it Okay, but she does say, A, they're close to being persons, so they have some rights, but not the right of, rights of persons. Two, the killing of an infant deprives a potential adoptive parent of pleasure. So there are all these parents out, here, out there who want to adopt, and if you kill the infant, you would like deprive them of their pleasure of adopting. So this has nothing to do with the infant, just the pleasure of the parents, the, the potential adoptive parents. And three, we value infants and we should respect those values. This is not saying infants are valuable. It's saying we value them. And so she's saying, well, like, I like infants, you know, don't kill them. Um, but can't the same response be given for late term abortion or even any abortion? Right. So number one, they're close to being persons. So then you shouldn't get an abortion. You have to have a strong justification Two, there are adoptive parents out there. And um, so if you get an abortion, you're depriving the adoptive parent of pleasure. Three, we value fetuses. Well, OK, I mean, I guess pro-choicers don't really value fetuses unless, you know, the mother wants to have the baby. Um, but 50 percent of people in the United States are pro-life and they value fetuses. So shouldn't we respect those values? So 
I don't see her claims as like she, what she wants to do. Is, what she wants to be able to do is say infanticide is bad. Abortion is not bad. But all the reasons she's giving for thinking that infanticide is bad, well, it has nothing to do with the infant, for one. It has everything to do with sort of um, social ramifications, uh, except for number one, that has to do with the nature of the, the infant. Um, so she's wanting to, like, say the infant is special, but all the reasons she's given, she's given, like, would apply equally well to the fetus. So that's Marianne Warren's case, and it looks like she's going to have a hard time saying why infanticide is wrong, but abortion is not.